Columbus Small Animal Hospital, loving our work. I'm Dr. Jim Kramer. This is CJ. He's a 13 and a half pound, nine year old, neutered male Pomeranian. Looks pretty happy running around, but he actually has a very big problem. He's come in because he's straining to urinate. Here's CJ's urinary bladder, the black bag toward the top of the screen, the aorta that's underneath it. Then we see two large bladder stones coming into view. We see shadows behind them. You can see the probe is at the top of the screen. The ultrasound waves are going from top to bottom. And when they hit those stones, the stones stop the waves from going any farther. And we get shadows behind them. Very characteristic for urinary bladder stones and part of how we can tell they're actually in the bladder. It's possible to confuse something that's on either side of the bladder or deep to it in the colon perhaps and think that it might be in the urinary bladder when it's not. This video demonstrates the level of difficulty that's added to a bladder stone removal in a male versus a female dog. Unfortunately, the distal opening of the urethra is right in the middle of our surgical field. Here Dr. Stephanie is placing a urinary catheter retrograde into the urethra. Male dogs have a bone in their penis called an os penis and it limits how large the urethra can become and so when these stones start rolling down from the top in that funnel shaped urethra when they hit that os penis and can't go any farther then they pile up and now we've got a urinary blockage. It can be hard to place this catheter because sometimes you're bumping up against those stones that are lodged in that urethra. The only way to get these small stones out is to flush them backward up into the urinary bladder and then remove them from that end. The urinary bladder is fragile in that it won't tolerate being clamped. If you clamp the tissue, then it will cause subsequent necrosis and lead to leakage later on. And so you have to manipulate it with a stay suture like Dr. Wesley is doing. And now she's making an approach into the urinary bladder to get to those stones. And now the scalpel has penetrated the bladder wall and you can see the urine escaping. And that's why she has that urinary bladder packed off so the urine won't leak back into the abdomen. These stones are often round and hard and they're difficult to get a hold of. They're wet and they're slippery. Dr. Stephanie, is trying to secure one of them with these curved forceps Kelly clamp but ultimately is unable to exteriorize the stone with that and now she's using the spatula end of a periosteal elevator and has much more success removing these stones and there they come These stones are kind of glued together in a little mass of gelatinous material. But the stones themselves are very hard. We have containers of stones from multiple cases and they look like the kind of rock you'd get from a quarry. And now Dr. Stephanie is flushing under some pressure retrograde from the tip of the urethra back up into the urinary bladder to make sure that all the stones have been removed. And then having completed that, she's going to flush normal grade from the urinary bladder out the urethra as urine would normally flow to make sure, and there it is, a little stream of saline coming usual way from the urinary bladder out through the tip of the penis and the urethra. And now she is closing the urinary bladder with a watertight seal with suture material. Once that's done, she'll flush the serosal surface of this urinary bladder to clean it as much as we possibly can before replacing it back into the abdomen. And now she's closing the abdominal fascia and subcutaneous layers. Eventually she will close the skin with surgical staples, completing the incision closure. And here she is placing those surgical staples into the skin 
to complete the closure. And now she is treating that incision with therapy laser. This is when we had a class 3 therapy laser which we have now upgraded to a class 4. So here are those bladder stones having been removed. You can see that these are not the type that are really smooth, but they are very hard like rocks. And here's our patient the very next day feeling much better. This poor little Pomeranian does have other medical challenges besides this, but we've solved this one for the time being. Now those stones will be sent away and analyzed and special food will be prescribed to try to keep this from reoccurring. All right, CJ, at least uh, one problem solved. And there we are. Happy day. Columbus Small Animal Hospital, loving our work.